All right, this is Chris Blast with the ICS ISAC. I'm here today with Fred Cohen from Fearless Security. We want to talk about the assessment process you have and the need to have large numbers of industrial facilities get a handle on who they are so they can make rational decisions about uh, the security solutions they choose. Right, so we all recognize that historically, in order to really understand what's going on in an enterprise, you need to do a study that typically takes six months and costs a quarter of a million dollars. So I was trying to figure out how that's ever going to work for the thousands, hundreds of thousands of critical infrastructure elements in the United States and the millions across the world. I couldn't figure out how they were going to be able to afford that or whether it was going to be helpful to the people that work there. So what we did was we tried to develop an assessment methodology and a tool that allows us to do that same process uh, in about 10 days for about uh, $25,000. And that's where we've gotten to this point. We have uh, special versions of it for different sectors so that of the hundred decisions that uh, people would have to make, uh, they uh, they have specific sets of decisions that apply to their sector so that it reduces the complexity of the assessment process. And what we're hoping to do is do enough assessments for particular verticals like water systems, power systems, you know, shoemakers, you name it, uh, to where we can get it down to maybe a half a day and $5,000 and, and uh, have uh, good answers for the vast majority of people uh, at a level that's affordable. So we're trying to just change the equation so that the millions of people that need to be served can ultimately be served uh, with methodologies that just won't scale. How far do you think we can get in the next you know, 12, 24, 36, 60 months in advancing the state of security and critical infrastructure? Well, so it's a big complicated set of issues you just talked about. So the first thing, you're right, we open sourced it. So uh, our standard of practice is available on the internet and anybody can download it. You just go to all.net and click on protection and you download it. We have vertical ones. We've just developed, uh, along with University of British Columbia and the Inner Paris Trust Project and Webster University, uh, a standard of practice for archives and records management to allow public records around the world to become more trustworthy. Um, and so that's a vertical and we're testing that out with archives around the world from different countries. Uh, we've done the same thing for industrial control systems, and that's a vertical. And then we have the enterprise version, which was the base that we've been working on for many, many years. So we think by creating more and more of these, of these verticals and closer and closer niches, we can keep dropping the price and the complexity, eventually down to where it's more or less prescriptive. So that's that part of it. How far we can get, how soon, that's a big problem, right? So, so the evolutionary nature of infrastructure is that you can't just go replacing it all, right? You, know, you could say, I want a new secure water environment, but going and replacing the, uh, I guess there are 100,000 water systems in the United States alone or something. So replacing 100,000 water systems worth of computers and, and networks and technology is just not going to happen. So infrastructures tend to roll over in the 20 to 40 year time frame, sometimes even longer. So you can expect it's going to take that long to get there. On the other hand, the, the biggest problems we have can be solved by architecture. So there, there are relatively small changes and relatively small numbers of decisions that you can make that can dramatically change the equation, make it much harder to attack and much easier to defend. So and we think that that, that approach will be something that will move us forward quickly so that 20 years from now we're not in the same situation we're in today. Uh, obviously you're never going to achieve perfection, but maybe we can get you know, good enough so that uh, the rest of the world you know, just doesn't have the massive negative effects people have tried to anticipate and are claiming are going to happen. So, so the, the key here is to reduce the aggregation of risk so massive failures don't happen, uh, to make it so that when there are failures, they don't last as long, so that the people running those systems know how to deal with them, so that they don't physically destroy the mechanisms of infrastructure, which are very difficult and long-term to replace and fix. Thank you very much for that, and I just want to thank you for all the work you've done over the years. You know, I, to, to echo the, the points that when we're looking at critical infrastructure, we don't have the option to replace everything. We have to put in place a process where people can make rational decisions about what they have, what's actually possible. And I think your architecture, your standard practice is a very good step in that direction. Well, I, you know, it's free, and I hope people will use it, and if they're having problems using it, you know, we're happy to help them, you know, do better.